So I want to talk about code coverage, but before I do that, it's really important, I think, to talk about debugging because they are very related, of course. You can see here I have two filters, one called debugging source and one called debugging objects, and they contain the same member. Here's ENC debug, which is this program right over here, and this service program called ENC decrypt, which I'll show right here. This is the service program, here is the regular program. In, in, in ENC decrypt, I have this procedure called secret data, which is called over here. It's called right here, you can see, where it's basically it's gonna pass it's going to pass a 24 character string and this other one character parameter and this is an encryption service program so it's going to encrypt any value that I pass to that procedure. Here are the members like I said here they are. So to do debugging is quite simple to do debugging I can click on the object right here and I can either set a service entry point or I can submit it directly to batch. So of course if I just right click over here and say service entry point, these are my parameters, here's my library program name and my user ID and when this program is called with these three conditions over here I'll say OK. My entry point is now set as it's saying and the service entry point view just opened up over here and sure enough there it is. There's my program. You can see it right there with all my parameters right there. And of course, the way this works is the next time this program runs with these with these three parameters here, the program will go into debug mode. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually remove this. I'm going to right click on here and remove it from an entry point because I'm going to I'm going to submit this guy to batch instead. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to close these members, close all of them just like that. And here now again is the program object. I'm going to right click over here and just say debug as a batch job. And here we go. So what will happen is this job will get submitted to batch. And the source, it will then go into in, on hold. The debug server will, will recognize it was submitted through RDI. It will switch my perspective to the debug perspective and bring up the source code and I will then be able to step through that program. So let's see how this works. Batch. Here we go. The job was submitted to batch. My perspective should change in a moment, hopefully. There it goes. Here's a source code. I'm now there. And I can now simply start stepping through this code. And as I do, I'll press F6 to step, to step over, actually. And you can see I'm on the read instruction right here. I press F6 one more time and I just read the first record so of course my variables view has just changed has been populated rather and all the variables that have been changed are now set to yellow yellow color if I just keep pressing F6 as you can see right here I'm going through my code line by line and and as the variables change they turn yellow all right so that's pretty simple I'm not I'm right now on the line to call that procedure right there I'm going to press now F5 which is step into and step into should bring up the source which it just did and I'm now in my service program and now I can step through that by pressing F6 again and sure enough it's going through this housekeeping routine right now in the service program and it's just doing some calculations and the ultimate goal here is it's going to call the encrypt routine which I'm in right now it's going to encrypt that field and it's going to re ultimately return to me a a um, encrypted value which it just, it just should have done that right now in fact if I hover over it right now you can see there it is there's, there's encrypted value right there so now I'll press F8 to finish this I just did and now the program is done so that's basic that's basic debugging let me close these again because now I'm going to do the same thing but instead of doing debug I'm going to do code coverage. Let's see how this works. Well again I can do it one of two ways. I can come right here and say service entry point right here and it's the same exact procedure. When I say OK it sets the entry point as it did right here but however now I want to click on this and I want to toggle this because I don't want to do regular debug mode. I want to uh, run this on the code coverage, which I could do right here, and now it's ready to go. I could also right click over here and I can do that here as well. 
However, in this case, I don't want to do this at all. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to actually submit this guy to batch. So I'm going to remove it here, and I'm going to submit it to batch the same way I did earlier. And notice here where it says, normally you can say debug as batch, but now I'm going to come down to say code coverage as batch. Now this works differently. Debug, when I debug a program, I step through the program line by line by line. Code coverage is very, very different. Code coverage, the program will get submitted to batch in this case, and it won't show me the code. I'm not going to be stepping through the code. What's different here is the program will run to completion. And then once it's complete, a, another view will pop up. The code coverage results view will pop up, and it will show me the results of how that program was actually executed line by line after the fact, once it's already done. So you'll see this in a second now. Code coverage as batch. It's submitted to batch. It's running right now. The program is running in batch, and it should run to completion very shortly. And there it, it just did that. And this, and by the way, in that particular program, I, I think it encrypted five uh, records in the pro in the, the file, so it was very quick. But anyway, here's here are the code coverage results now, and here are the two members. There's ENC debug. I can open that up, and it's saying that the, you can see the bulk of that program, 13 lines, it's a very tiny program, 12 of them were executed, which is interesting. And this one here is a service program right here. Again, 61 lines, and 46 of them have been executed. So if I just click on that, double click on that, yes, I want to show it. It actually now will show me with a green line next to every single line of code what was actually executed, as you can see. So it's very interesting, line by line. More importantly, though, this guy, 75%, let's, let's look on that one, because that one is more interesting to me. This is my service program. You can see where it came in. Here's my, my procedure interface over here. And down to the calculations. There's my housekeeping routine again. And this happened to have been called with a direction of E, which means encrypt. So I can just follow the code. Here's my housekeeping routine. Here's all my a, uh, my green rather. And notice here that the decrypt routine was not called at all. So those lines are shown in red. And this is a really, really powerful tool to start analyzing your code. Think about this. Think about if I change my data sets. I can keep running this program over and over in different data sets because as as these code coverage reports start accumulating. I can start comparing them to, with other ones. I can merge the results with other, with other code coverage reports. And I can really start getting a good sense of how my programs are actually functioning with different, under different conditions. And you know, think about this. Maybe I have dead code. That's a good possibility. You know, if I have code, if I, if I have data set that I'm convinced should be executing every line of program, every pro line of code in that program, and it doesn't, I might have a bug in my program or just dead code. So it's really powerful. This is really just part one as an introduction to code coverage. This is not so much a 9.6 enhancement. This came out in 9.5. But the reason why I'm showing it is because there's a new feature in 9.6 called headless code coverage, which I'll talk about in my next video. So enjoy code coverage. It's very powerful. Play with it, and you'll, you too will see how great this, this feature is. Bye.